For those of you who have followed my channel for a while, you will know that I am not the biggest fan of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I think that it does have some good ideas contained within, and I can wholeheartedly respect the effort that went into making this gargantuan experience. However, it was also... I feel thin, sort of stretched, like butter scraped over too much bread. Ideas in both its story and its gameplay were either underbaked, frustratingly untouched on, or frustratingly uninteresting. And whatever the hell happened with Vanny. So yeah, there's a lot that went wrong with Security Breach, and it brings me no small amount of joy to say that playing Ruin? You can feel just how much these devs care about the feedback they've gotten, and how they've strived to do their best in making the DLC as massive an upgrade as they possibly can. And that started as far back as the... The marketing for Security Breach, in retrospect now that we have the full game out, is kind of a punch in the nuts. You had little things that don't make an appearance, like the infamous knife of Vanny, but also big things! Like how Vanessa was pretty clearly going to be A, a major player in this story, and B, an ally. Both things that were scrapped from the final game, and the character just feels so meaningless now. I was pretty heavily in the fan base during the build up to the game's release. It was great! We were all really excited to have actual human characters in the flesh! But she's such a nothing character in the final game, and you can't tell me that all these posters, statues, and prominent moments in the trailer were for a character that has about a minute of screen time and no story relevance, questionably. Hell, there was even a mysterious voice who, let's be honest, we all kinda knew would be Afton. True, what it is actually saying is just as frustratingly vague as most of the game. Like, seriously, you will do what I want, you will bring me what I want, or both of you will burn. Wow. Very specific, guys. But it did give me reason to believe there'd be proper story and dialogue, which, barring a gracious amount of recordings and phone calls over the series, only Sister Location even tried to do. But no, Burn Trap doesn't get a single voice line. Vane gets a single phrase to repeat over and over that might just scream ran out of time more than anything else in this story, though that's admittedly a very high bar. All these things, over two years plus, for a series that used to have mere months between releases, so much build up and so little payoff. All this to say, Ruin takes it the opposite direction and takes it very well. A single poster. A single poster and a release year. A year later, boom, it's out. No fuss. And the trailer doesn't exaggerate anything that doesn't play a big part in the actual game. Congrats! You did the bare minimum for decent advertising! I'm exaggerating for comedic effect, of course. I can't imagine how difficult and stressful it must be to work in a new big game, especially for a franchise like FNAF, and I'm sure they did the best they could. For now, though, let's actually talk about that game, huh? Gameplay is by far the easiest part to talk about, because it's just straight up improvements to be seen. The open world pizza plex, impressive as it was, just didn't lend itself to anything resembling, uh, what's it called? Fun. Ruins smaller, more condensed rooms and corridors lend themselves much better in so, so many ways to the horror, to the story, to so many little and big details that you can find throughout the DLC. Not that Security Breach didn't have details, but it was mostly just real emptiness. As I mentioned, the horror is severely ramped up. I mean, it's still not exactly Silent Hill, you might get Spongebob coastered on this one, but I never expected it to be anything less than that. And unlike Security Breach, the animatronics actually feel like a threat. Which, again, is large part because we don't have to go through moments like this every 15 minutes. Though it is a shame that some of the original's absolute best get between 10 and 0 seconds of screen time. Like, yes, 
we really needed the whole side quest secret to give Chica her voice box and be rewarded with the riveting line of... Yeah, call it a nitpick if you want, but this moment is so fascinating to me in particular. Like, what were they trying to do here? This has to be a remnant of... <laughs> remnant of cut content, right? It has to be. But the main thing I want to focus on is the Vanny Mask. Very often in the FNAF series, we get told about big story beats through audio or get to see them through a vague 8-bit lens. This works excellently from a story perspective, I think it's awesome that we get to see the same mask that was actually built up for years, and get to see what kind of hold Glitch Trap might have had over Vanessa, like, even trapped and brainwashed in the digital world, she must have felt like a god sometimes. And it just makes me even more mad that her character is as deep as a puddle in Security Breach. But the main thing is, from a gameplay perspective, it's awesome as well. Having you question what's real and what's not. Having you feel the corruption from the added safety and ability the mask provides. But always feeling uneasy wearing it. It's so good, it's probably my favourite part of the DLC, and I can't wait to see what's done in the future with it both gameplay and story-wise. And if we get a follow-up to this and find out it's been broken in two in the crashed elevator and that's the last we hear of it, I'm gonna scream! Okay, thanks, bye! Yeah, this man deserves his own category, because, I mean, this is kind of massive, isn't it? After one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten main games, a handful of spin offs, and far too many books, for the very first time, William Afton, or some version of him, is not the main antagonist. And I'm so, so mixed about it. On one hand, make no mistake, this needed to happen. The legacy of the Springtrap had gone from arguably FNAF's most popular, widely regarded character to a complete and utter laughingstock within the community and otherwise. I cannot emphasise that enough. The community reaction to Burn Trap was probably a big wake-up call to both Steel Wool and Scott Cawthorn. Why Glutztrap didn't have this kind of reaction, I'd say that's a discussion worthy of its own video. There's a lot to go over there. So let's keep it security breach for now. But on the other hand, well, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or not to have, but I really don't like the Mimic, no. There's a few reasons behind it. The build-up, threat, character, and so on. In terms of build-up, here, the Mimic serves as more of a plot twist. Assuming that the person playing it is not deeply enriched in the FNAF fanbase and has not read the collective of books, the reaction will generally be, whoa, the voice of the protagonist I was following the whole game was actually a big endoskeleton. Huh? What? Why? And a dozen other questions will go through their heads. Questions that the game just doesn't have time to, or if I'm being honest, what feels more likely, doesn't want to explain. If you're not deep within the FNAF lore, it's a wholly unsatisfying ending that's way more sequel bait than any kind of story it actually wants to tell. Which, to be honest, feels like kind of a scummy move, and one that these kind of indie horror games are doing more and more lately. Like, you can have a satisfying ending to your narrative and also leave people interested in a sequel, guys. Bendy and the Dark Revival is proof enough of that. But this isn't meant to be a comparison video, even if those videos do by far the best on my channel. So for now, let's just talk about Afton. He shows up in FNAF 2 in a very simple but very effective way of just in the background. It speaks volumes to how well it was done that so much theory and fan art was made over a crappy 8-bit shadow man. Then there's FNAF 3 which of course gives him more of the spotlight and dare I say also acts as a bit of a plot twist that both the purple guy and this spring trap are one and the same. I wasn't around the community at the time. Was this a common theory leading up to FNAF 3? Let me know in the comments. And also, if you're in the comments, you know, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, uh, thank you. All this to say, 
if you played the original trilogy of games without being in the fandom, you'd have a good to great idea of what's going on, thanks both to the secret minigames and the information the game tells you. Combine that with the excellent FNAF 3 trailer, and there's a reason why Springtrap became such an icon in the series. Then there's character, and this is where the mimic really falls flat. Look, in a series where murdering robots are absolutely dime a dozen, you really have to do something more interesting than it can copy voices to catch my attention. Springtrap, when he first showed up, was a whole lot of things. A corpse inside an animatronic, the first adult that was haunting us, the first real character instead of just random child spirit in a robot to appear. Sure, it, the character wasn't much more than sadistic child killer, but back then it was more than enough. And the jump scare that may or may not have turned FNAF from a trilogy to 10 plus entries was... different. Maybe not better, but definitely different, something that stood out. I really can't tell you what's different about the Mimic, what's interesting. What are his goals? His motivation? Is it just to kill people? I guess that's it, judging from the fact that he tries to kill Cassie, but well, that's not really that different from every other bloody enemy we've faced over the last decade, is it? Maybe I'll be proven wrong. I'm perfectly content to let Steel Will cook with this, but I just can't force myself to get excited for the Mimic, especially after how they've dropped the ball so hard beforehand. I mean, what's even the point of Burn Trap now? To make things very clear, I'm still very intrigued as to what Help Wanted 2 will have in store for us later this year. In small part because, well, personally, my favourite FNAF game is the original Help Wanted. The original games and new minigames boosted massively by the VR system because, oh my god, the jump scares in that game are absolutely horrifying, in a series that seemed to have previously lost the magic. But much more than that, the background story of the original playtest and glitch trap, the escape plan being tied to it being a VR game is so cool, I've talked about it in great lengths before. How the heck is this all going to work in a sequel? I have no idea, but I'm excited to see, even if it involves the Mimic. And at this point, I don't see how it can't. I'm willing to give Steel Wool the benefit of the doubt, because I did last time and they definitely tried their best to improve, so we'll see how things go. Don't let me down, Ram Man. Don't let me down. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Yeah, it's a little bit of a departure from what I've been making recently, but I can't just keep on making videos on the Owl House and Amphibia forever. So, I hope you can enjoy this blast from the past for me content-wise, and if it does well, hey, I'm more than happy to make more. So if you want to see that, please, you already know what to do. I don't want to keep you any longer. Until next time, friends.